Congratulations on your purchase of your Chroma camera drone. In this video, we're going to be going over how easy it is to get your Chroma in the air for the very first time. The first thing we want to do is get our flight pack charging so that it can be charging in the background while we prepare the rest of the Chroma for flight. To start, we'll go ahead and grab our power supply and our AC cord and connect those. Once we've connected the power supply and the AC cord, we can now take the power supply cord and plug it directly into the charger. After we've plugged in these two, we can now plug in the power supply to the wall unit. Next, we'll take our charging lead and insert it into the charger. It's important to note here that this can only be plugged in one direction, so you don't need to worry about any kind of reverse polarity. After we've plugged the charging lead into the charger, now we can take our battery and plug it directly into the charging lead. Again, this can only be plugged in one direction due to its design, so you don't have to worry about any issues there. After you've plugged in the battery, you'll notice that the light on the front of the charger will begin flashing red. Flashing red means the battery is charging, and a solid green light means that it is done charging and you're ready to fly. Now it's time to install and charge the ST10 transmitter battery. Before we do that though, now is a good time to remove the protective screen cover. However, make sure you've read all the warnings listed on the yellow label before you remove this cover. The first thing we want to do to install the battery is remove the battery door. To do that, just pull down on the battery door on the rear of the transmitter and remove it. Now you can go ahead and grab your ST10 LiPo battery. To connect the LiPo battery, put one end of the battery into the connector of the, of the radio, making sure the polarity is correct. There's really only one way to plug this in, so you shouldn't have a problem. Now you can tuck the wires away and put the battery into the ST10. Make sure the blue label is up so that if you have to remove the battery, it's easy to get to the next time. Now you can install the battery door to seal the radio back up. Next thing we need to do is get the radio on the charger. To do that, you're going to use the included micro USB adapter and plug it into the side of the radio. After you've installed that connector, you're gonna take the other side of the USB cable and plug it into an approved USB power source. It'll take a few moments for the radio to register the power and it will be noted by the front of the radio with a blue LED light and the screen will turn on as well. You may disconnect the USB cable when the on-screen battery icon shows full capacity. Now it's time to install the propellers onto your Chroma. Go ahead and grab the propeller box that came included in your Chroma box. Inside this box, you're going to want to grab two A propellers and two B propellers. The props and motor pods have a letter code, either A or B, molded in. Match the A props to the A motor pods and the B props to the B motor pods. The A props thread on counterclockwise. The B props thread on clockwise. It's also easy to remember this if you push through the direction of the trailing edge of the propeller. You want to make sure that these props go on finger tight and do not over tighten them. As the chroma flies, it will always be tightening these propellers. Now that we've installed all the propellers onto the chroma and have a fully charged flight battery and ST10 transmitter battery, we're ready to power on the system for the first time. Before we do that, let's go ahead and remove the gimbal case that comes installed on the gimbal out of the box. Then, we want to go ahead and remove the protective lens cover so that our first video isn't distorted. After we've done that, we'll go ahead and raise the GPS mast. It is vitally important that this GPS mast be raised before every single flight. It houses the GPS, antenna, and compass, so that it's very important that this is upright when you first fly. After we've done that, we can go ahead and install the flight battery for the first time. To do so, line it up with the back of the chroma and slide it in gently. You'll notice the battery is fully installed when you hear a positive click. Before powering on your ST10 transmitter, make sure the flight mode switch is in the smart position. Also, make sure the right slider is in the forward rabbit position. Now it's time to power on your chroma. To do so, move the center switch to the on position. You'll notice that after immediately powering on the chroma, all four motor pods will turn green. This indicates that the battery is 100% charged. If one of the lights is red, that means the battery is 75% charged. If two of the lights are red, that means the battery is 50% charged. If three of the lights are red, that means the battery is about 25% charged. And if all of the lights are red, that means don't fly, the battery is pretty dead. 
After the chroma initializes on a flat and level surface, the model will begin to search for GPS. This is indicated by a green light orbiting the quadcopter from motor pod to motor pod. The model will not get GPS inside, so let's go ahead and go outside for our first flight. For your first flight, we're going to be flying in smart mode. It's important to place the chroma about 16 feet in front of you with the rear of the chroma facing you as the pilot. This will ensure that the safe circle and stick relativity will be operational. Now that we've placed our chroma on a flat and level surface, we can now turn on our ST10 radio followed by the chroma. This will give the chroma time to search for GPS and for the ST10 radio to connect. Before we can start the motors on the chroma, we need to make sure it's locked into GPS. This is indicated by solid green lights on the rear two motor pods and solid white lights on the front two motor pods. It's also indicated on the ST10 radio via the telemetry readout. The chroma also emits an audible tone when it has locked into GPS. To start the motors of your chroma, press and hold the red start stop button on the top left of your ST10 radio for three seconds. The motors will enter in idle speed. We're now ready to lift off. With with the left control stick, raise the stick all the way to the top and let the chroma rise into the air about 15 feet. When we let go of the stick, the chroma will hold position and altitude. Since we're flying in smart mode for our first flight, the chroma is operating with the safe circle and stick relativity activated. Stick relativity means that when we put Right control stick forward, the chroma will always go away from the pilot. When we push the control stick backwards, the chroma will always come towards the pilot. When you push the right control stick to the right, the chroma will always go to the right. And when you push the control stick to the left, the chroma will always go to the left. To rotate your chroma in the air, move the left control stick right or left so that the chroma rotates about 180 degrees. Now, with the right control stick, push forward. You'll notice the chroma moves away from the pilot just as it did before because stick relativity is taking care of the orientation for you. If at any time you become overwhelmed, release both sticks on the ST10 radio. The chroma will stop in the air and hold GPS and altitude. If you notice your chroma is not flying close to you, that's normal. The safe circle has been activated and it has created a 30 foot diameter barrier around the pilot preventing the chroma from flying too close. Now that you understand how to fly your chroma, we're ready to start filming. To take a video, press the top right video button on the ST10 transmitter once. You'll notice the on-screen display indicates that it is now recording. To stop a video, press that same button again and the video will stop recording. To take a photograph, press the top left button on the ST10 radio once. You'll notice the on-screen display says start capture. When the capture is complete, the ST10 will also let you know. Do note that you cannot take a photograph while you're recording at the same time. The slider on the left of the ST10 radio controls the camera pitch up and down. Now that we're done filming, we're ready to land our chroma. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to flip the flight mode switch to the return home position. When you do this, all the lights on the chroma will turn red and it will return to where it took off from autonomously and land itself and then turn off the propellers. The other way to land the chroma is to take the left control stick and lower it down slowly until the chroma touches the ground. After doing so, you must press and hold the start stop button for one and a half seconds in order to kill the motors. Turn the chroma off first and then the ST10 radio. For more videos like this, please visit nochroma.com.